folks, what is up? This is one big bug, and I'm coming at you with Euro Truck Simulator 2. And I forgot to reset my card so that I'm running SLI, but yeah, it's all right. It'll be okay for this episode. So I believe I already picked our job, which was the. That's not where I am. Where am I? Shouldn't I be shown on the map somewhere? Okay. I'm there. Here I am. Yep, yeah, I already chose our um, luxury SUVs. I already got the destination set. So, let's go. Our lights we do have our lights yes we do okay ah damn it I still forgot to turn on the small mirror mod uh, you guys are gonna just have to remain remain with me on this one uh, I because I really need to do this uh, Smaller UI mirrors add. And then confirm changes. View game. Yeah. Because it's good intentions, like I said before, unless you have a VR helmet or you have. So hopefully smaller. Drive. Thank you. Yay, look at that. Look at how cool that is. Much smaller and right up in the corner where I couldn't see anyways because of the visor. That is so perfect. Although there is one more thing I need to do. I need to shut this light off because it's blinding me. Okay. So, oh, we're really close. Awesome. That is so cool, the small mirror, finally. That is a much, much cleaner, um, can you go away? That is a much, much cleaner, uh... I also need to change the freaking dashboard again. And there's our trailer. <clears throat> Again, though, I don't agree with the weight of this. There is no way, absolutely no way, that this trailer only weighs 20 tons. Or 10 tons. Each of those SUVs have got to be at least 2 tons, if not 3 tons each. Whatever. I think it's still awesome that we're going to tow it. So I shouldn't bitch too much. We're clear for takeoff. I know that uh, at least one person, maybe a couple more, warned me about like behavioral specialists and what they try and do, but that's not what I'm in for. I've already talked to one behavioral specialist, and the reality is, is um, the truth, and I've and I've come to it. I need help. I need help dealing with my problems and my issues. That's all there is to it. And it's come to my mind uh, recently that it's not just 
dealing with the loss of my wife. There's more. There's a lot more. My entire life has been difficult. Everyone could say their life's been difficult unless they're like really lucky, really good at something. I mean, I'm not. My father at the time when I was young is what we would call abusive today. Uh, I think I've mentioned before that when he was raised, it really wasn't abusive. It was, it's how you raised a kid. So, I don't know where to go with that one. But it goes way beyond my childhood. This isn't just mommy-daddy issues. Although, you know, it's part of it. I never lived in the same place for more than two years, so I was constantly bouncing from school to school. Uh, I was picked on in school constantly until the 8th grade when I finally had gotten fed up and started fighting back. The one thing I will never tell my kid if I ever have one is to just walk away or turn the other cheek. You know, if a bully's picking on you, stand up for yourself if you can. A lot of times, that'll back a bully down. Ugh, get off my TV. Little buggy. Um, because it wasn't until I started standing up for myself did bullies start backing off. You know, and things go on. Now, I did some horrible things in my life. I really have. And that includes when I was younger. But, you know, I got sent... Um, I'm just going to open up with you guys, so... Be prepared for some material here that you may have never known. When I was like had just turned around 12 years old I was sent to a short term care slash mental diagnosis facility I really was I'm 12 years old behind giant white locked doors with orderlies and a lot of disturbed people At 12, with adults, it was very traumatic. And then from there, I went to a long term rehabilitation place, which didn't work. When I was 19, I was kicked out of my house. My sister, and although I have done bad things to my sister, had fully manipulated my mother. And I was actually kicked out of my house, and I got a restraining order against me from both of them. The only thing I had ever done is try to protect my mother from my sister. As I tried to protect her from her sister, my Aunt Patty. And yes, that's her actual name. Whatever. I hate these fucking off ramps. So from there, I went and lived with my grandmother for a couple weeks. There was no way I could stay with her. She lived in a retirement mobile home park where you had to be under a certain age. So from there, I moved with my father. My father and I have never been able to live together for very long. And that mainly comes from the fact that my father is very... Uh, at this time, the relationship between my father was very different. We had gone past what had happened in the past and had moved on. But I've always been more of a freedom, you know, I want a little bit of freedom. My father's always been very work-orientated. So our two personalities never actually met, meshed, just to be honest with you. And... 
I moved away from my dad, which was in Virginia, to New Hampshire with a friend. In New Hampshire, my friend, after we lived together for a while, decided to move back out on his own. Uh, probably something to do with things I was doing. So I was still not the most honest of persons. And he moved one of his friends in with me. And this friend turned, to be, turned out to be not only a habitual liar, and a sensational habitual liar, but he also screwed me over hard even after I helped him. And I should have known. Because not only did I help him move, but I paid off his gas bill. And I hardly knew him. I paid off his gas bill from his old place so that he didn't leave a debt behind. He screwed me over where I lived. And I ended up losing that place. As he moved out. Didn't say anything, but it wasn't hard to tell when I walked in one morning and saw a bunch of stacked boxes. I knew what was going on, and come to find out, he had stolen the rent I had given him to pay the landlord. So, from there, I, um, I forget where I moved to from there. And I don't know, it just ended up in a bad situation. I kind of bounced around. I moved with a friend for a while, but then I ended up being kicked out because supposedly the landlord didn't like it, which was bullshit. My friend just decided he didn't want me there anymore because I was too much of an inconvenience. Despite the fact I had paid several times for him to keep his furniture because he was getting it from Rent-A-Center. And I had given them a phone to use by putting a phone in under my name. So I ended up getting kicked out again. So I had to go find my own place to live again. And I got this room in this really bad uh, boarding house. And things were really starting to spiral out of control at that point. I was starting to go to bars. I, you know, which wasn't terrible, but I was drinking more. It was very easy to get drunk. The bars were within walking distance of where I lived. Very easy walking distance. Uh, it was very easy for me to get drunk. Uh, mugs were a dollar. Mug, a mug of beer was, you know, draft was a dollar. Bottles were a dollar fifty of... Uh, we, we drank uh, Bud Ice at the time. Playing darts, I bought my own darts. And, and just started kind of becoming, the, you know, a drunk. Then things went horribly wrong. This one day, I was sitting in my room. Oh, fuck you. I was sitting in my room and... Um, it was pouring rain outside, and I was looking at porn on my computer. Plain and simple. I was just looking at porn on my computer. Nothing about it. Nothing big about it. And I saw these two kids, they must have been, I don't know, 14, maybe, 13, 14, they, they looked about 14. And they were standing out in the pouring rain. I knew these two kids, they belonged to a couple that lived upstairs in one of the larger rooms. So, I opened the door up for them because apparently they had forgotten their key and I told them, you know, hey, why don't you just come in? And they were like, okay, you know, thanks. But th there was really, wasn't really a common area for them to sit. And they were soaking wet. Now, no, I did not ask them to come in and take their clothes off. God, no. But I said, well, look, why don't you guys come in? You know, I've got a couple chairs I can set up for you. And give you a couple towels. 
and then you guys can, you know, try and dry off a little bit and sit down and relax. Well, when they came in, he's telling me we're on the right track. Looks like it. When they came in, I still had a a, a picture on my computer, naked woman. And I was sitting talking with them, just chatting it up with them, and I noticed their eyes kept drifting off of me. So I turned around and looked, and I saw it was on the computer, and I went, ah, oh, fuck. So I quickly shut my monitor off, and I said, you know, I said, no, I said, sorry, guys, no. I, if I had known, I'd have shut that off. I said, that's that, I just, you know, I just told them no. Well, apparently a couple hours later, when they did hook up with their, uh, parents finally what ended up happening is they started talking about the picture and that's all it took suddenly I'm a pedophile cops show up I got the father in my face ready to kill me I got the mother all upset and she's hitting me on the chest how could you do that to my kids and I'm explain, trying to explain to the cops, I didn't do anything. I just brought them in out of the rain, gave them towels to dry off. I said I had a picture up on my computer because I had been looking at it earlier. And I'd forgotten it was there while I was talking to them. When I noticed that they were looking at that and not me, I turned around and saw it and shut it off immediately. I, and that was it. Cops absolved me. There was nothing wrong, but that doesn't matter. Some psycho vigilante wannabe uh, took it upon himself to uh, try and bust down my door and then proceed to try and kick my ass. Fortunately, I had, I had quite a lot of experience fighting and I was an accomplished grappler. So I was able to fend him off. But at that point, I just couldn't stay there anymore because who know who knows what else would happen. So I ended up staying at my ex-girlfriend's place for a few days until I could hop on a bus. And I fortunately was already in the middle of making plans when this happened. Sort of fortunately. And I moved to Pennsylvania, the little town called Shemokin. And basically what I had just done is jumped out of the shitty toilet and straight into the sewer. Shemokin is a terrible place. It, <laughs> it, it, especially if you're trying to climb out of a dumpster. I'm sorry, it is. The people there are hardworking, but there's a church and a bar on every corner. They come out of one and go into the other. You either work at the coal uh, at the coal mine, or you work uh, you work at, uh, for the temp agency, which only can temp you out to one with one place, and that's the card making factory. This bug is really starting to piss me off. So I was working at the card making factory and things just things just kept going wrong. Kept going wrong, kept going wrong. Eventually I moved out of where I was staying. Um, mainly because the person that I went down there for, who had supposedly left their husband months ago and had filed for divorce, went back to her husband. And now I'm a target again. I was very young and stupid. Trust me. And, by the way, Shemokin's just about as easy to get drunk in as uh, New Hampshire was. So, I moved with a friend of a friend, and it really wasn't going to work out very well. But, I was trying to make the best of it. Well, the very day after I moved in, Uh, the very day after I moved in, my friend, who had pointed me to this person I was living with... Is that a train horn? Because it sucked. Uh, 
but they had they had problems with she had had problems with her husband and it came to a huge head and she ended up needing a place to move so she ended up moving in with us but because she was friends of who we were with and I wasn't I got kicked out of the bedroom I was in and put down in, into the living room I listened to them yelling back and forth as they each played on their computers socializing and having fun and I'm sitting down in the living room left out in the cold and I had helped this friend through many times I had been a confidant for I had been a close friend for we had become good friends online and I was basically ignored at that point well that just kind of set me off and it didn't make me angry I didn't like go insane or anything like well that's relatively speaking I didn't go, uh, like, angry, insane, mad. I broke down. I literally, literally had a nervous breakdown. Mind you, I was only, like, 23 when this happened. At 23 years old, I had a nervous breakdown. I tried. I tried. I was going to commit suicide. The only way I knew how was standing over the sink, water running, ready to slip my wrists with a big knife I had in my hand. And it didn't happen because I just broke crying. I was crying so hard and I was crying so desperately that I just collapsed. And I crawled to the side of the sink, curled up, holding on to the stuffed animal that I had had forever. And that I don't know what happened to. And I cried. I think from what I can gather, from things I was told, I was probably there for about two and a half to three hours. And I cried the entire time. I have a vague memory of the little stuffed animal I was holding being drenched. It was literally soaked because of so many tears. So my friends called an ambulance. The ambulance came and took me to a place known simply as Building 50. short-term crisis center I was there for two weeks and only two weeks and this is how a short-term crisis center works once they believe you're over the crisis, you're out. What happens to you after that is not up to them. They don't care. They're there to get you over the crisis. So I now found myself homeless on the streets. I did the only thing I could do. I reached out to the people that weren't smoking. They weren't far away. I only had enough money in my pocket for a short-range bus ticket. And I asked them simply if I could move back. They let me come back. I went back to work at the card factory for a little while. Now there's a lot more that happened in between this. I'm giving you the abridged version. Because if I gave you the full version, you'd be here for several days listening to this. I'm not kidding. Not able to take things in Shimokin anymore. I called up my friend. The friend who I had lived with in New Hampshire. Uh, that's going to suck. And I asked him if he could help me. 
that I needed to get out of where I was or I was going to lose who I was. So he did. He was there for me, picked me up at the bus station when I came back, and I stayed one night at his house. His dad wouldn't let me stay. Jesus Christ, what the fuck? You stay there, not moving. Because I don't know what the fuck's wrong with you. And I'm gonna move around. Uh, but yeah, his dad wouldn't let me live in their house. He didn't want me there. Despite the fact that the mom actually liked me and enjoyed having me there. So, I found myself homeless again. I moved to Taunton at that point. And Taunton, Massachusetts. While there, I moved into the homeless shelter to where I slept on a cot in a hallway because there were no open beds. I was lucky, and they were kind enough to bring me in. I think they took pity on me because of how young I was. So, after two weeks, I had finally gotten a job, and I had gotten some money, and I was able to move into a place. 77 Broadway Street, Apartment 7. Well, and I, I've talked about this place before. Single window that looked out onto another building that I could spit on into an alleyway. In summer, no circulation. Uh, no circulation, no, um, no sheet, no pillow, and I had a black and white TV. And I had to make do with that. Well, over the course of the next five years, I managed to rebuild my life. And towards the end of those five years, I had moved in with a guy that I met and became friends with. His name was Dan. And I helped Dan gain some independence from his parents, who were very overbearing. And I helped him get out of a dead-end job. I know that being a McDonald's manager may not be the greatest of things, but it was far better than where he worked. So, I still couldn't stay, though. There were things that I just, I'm not going to say what, but of my friend, I discovered certain things that I found very disturbing, and I needed to leave. So, I was going to use my tax return to set up my own place to live. I actually had a decent job working for Burger King because I had been fired from McDonald's for telling my one of my sub-bosses off who didn't deserve to be a sub-boss. And everybody knew it. He was a... He, I call it sub-boss. Uh, an assistant manager or whatever. He didn't deserve it. The only reason he, he was assistant manager is because he knew someone. It was, it was literally one of those things. He was the laziest fuck I've ever saw. But I enjoyed the job I was working at Burger King. I didn't have to work till 3 in the morning. Uh, the job was easier. I liked the people better. It was great. So I was going to take my tax return and use it to pay first and last month's rent on a studio apartment, which I found out I, with what I was working, I could afford. Well, it was at that time that I met someone online. And in the course of a year, I had fallen in love with that person. And instead of using my tax return to pay for a studio apartment, I used it to pay for a plane ticket, and I moved here to Hawaii. And the rest is history. And Joy and I have lived in some very bad places as well. 
We lived in a place here in Maui known as the Bungalows. Now, the Bungalows is under new ownership today and is doing a resto of what it used to be and is a much improved place compared to what it was. But back when I lived there, it was a slum. It literally was owned by a slumlord. Druggies, alcoholics, prostitutes, and me and my wife lived in a room. I mean, I, I think I mentioned a few times, but... It was one time when I bought mouse traps because we had a mouse problem. I caught nine mice in ten minutes with the same mouse trap. I'm not kidding. You just slow down for that corner. So, we finally moved out of there to an... You guys all hearing that animal sound? It's really weird. So, anyways... Ah, uh, straight. We moved from there into the building across the... Well, not across the street, but it was next door to us. We moved to the building next door, and we had our own little one-bedroom apartment. Again, it was a slum, but it was better than where we lived. Well, after living there for a few months, we found out the guy was selling the place, and everybody there was going to be kicked out. Fortunately, at the time, we were invited to live up here with, jo with Joy's parents. No. No, no, no. I'm sorry. I'm skipping ahead. So we ended up moving to another place, which was basically a studio, with this really drunken idiot bitch who... <sighs> it's hard to talk. She, at one point, after signing a contract with us, guaranteeing us she wouldn't raise our rent, tried to raise our rent. It was just bad. And finally, it was after that, we decided again we needed to move because our landlord was just not somebody we wanted to deal with anymore. And we were going to move into this other place that was a little bit upcountry, and then we were invited to live here. Now, there's been a lot of stress since I've lived here. Between me and my wife. Well, there was a lot of stress since we lived here. Between me and my wife and her mom, especially after Joy's dad passed away. Well, things went to shit. And as you know, we were under threat of being thrown out. It turned out to be false. Things started pulling back together. More, you know, I don't know how else to explain it. Um, a long story short, not long after things have been pulled back together, Joy died. And now I... <laughs> now I find myself facing the same loaded gun that I have so many times before, starting over. Do you know how many times, uh, you, did you count, keep track of how many times I've started my life over? It's unbelievable. The amount of strength I've had to pull from myself, the willpower. <coughs> Excuse me. In order to keep going, I suffered a full on mental breakdown at 23 years old. And I suffered more breakdowns. That was just the most notable.
I mean, I, I... It's one thing to start over when you're 23, 25, 27. Okay? But I'm 42. And, well, to be honest with you, that's why I need help. That's why I need help. That's why I need a behavioral specialist to help me get to a long-term psychiatrist. That's what that sounds like. All that shit I told, I just told you in my past about. Yeah, like I said, that's the abridged version. That's the cliff notes of what's happened in my life. That's not detailed information of every incident and everything I've had to go through, such as being involved in quite literally a neighborhood war, having to stand at 19, 18, 17 years old between my mother and some pissed off person from the neighborhood ready to fight that's not the spiral out of control of the day's events I told you about in New Hampshire going to bars and getting drunk and then Pennsylvania even worse and, and it all started when I was 12 I've been fighting days like this since I was 12, and it's no joke. And the reality is, is I haven't dealt with any of it. And if I am going to restart again, if I'm going to go back to square one one more time, I need to start dealing with all of this. So... That's what's going to happen. I'm going to find myself a psychiatrist through my behavioral specialist and hopefully start getting some help. Because I honestly think if I, tr if I try to do this alone, I won't make it. I won't make it. I just don't have the strength anymore. I just don't. So, there you go. Take it for what you will. I just opened up and showed you the cliff notes of the life that I've lived. I feel like I've had to fight most every day of my life just to survive. I've been homeless at least twice. Pretty sure it was actually more like three times. I've been in and out of mental institutions. I've suffered nervous breakdowns. And I still kept going. I still kept fighting. And now I find myself having to do that again. Yeah, I need help. Anyways, before I repeat all that one more time, apparently. I'm sorry for uh, the depressing nature towards the end of this. It was kind of hard not to be. So... I'll just end it here before I go on any further. We'll finish up our delivery tomorrow. Uh, most likely. Yeah, most likely. Because we were here when we started. And we drove all of this. So going from here to here should be no problem whatsoever. But All right, folks. As I was saying, that's going to be me done for this episode. I hope you've been enjoying this. As much as...